What's up everyone, Electronic Search here, back with another video. Today we have the Sony KE-42TS-2, as you can see, the screen on it is kind of worn down. This is the plastic, and then right behind this plastic is the display, plasma display. This stuff is extremely rare. Right, there's the year, January 2004. KE-42TSTU. Sony. 415 Wa. Right down there is all the inputs. Let me show you them a little bit closer. Here's all the inputs. There is your power in, AC in, antenna, hook up, volume control right here, audio out. This is to connect to um, a sound system or something like that. This is video in four. This is video in three with a DVI port video in one and then down here is two this is some av hookups that are connected to a roku 2 to make this thing a smart tv and this is what 3.0 sent the tv works this is the first plasma tv that i got that actually works and it actually works. It's not going to end up like this. This non-working Samsung that has a completely cracked, completely cracked screen. This is the inner display, so when I drag my fingernails over it, I can't feel the glass. But this thing, it has to go. This is a really common plasma TV, a Samsung. It's from 2011 really common um i already took out the motherboard and then we're gonna take this thing apart we're gonna sell this 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 and then that that all for money and then i'm probably gonna take down the stand get all the kinds of metal in it and then drift will take this stuff away and make some money out of that stuff and then the speakers are right down there Right there, both left and right. The reason why the, it's all leaky is because the screws, the screws were stripped, and I'm I'm not I wasn't able to get the screws out because they were stripped, so I had to put some, some things on it to get it to loosen loosen it up, and that's a Panasonic Viera. TV also doesn't work just like the Samsung that completely doesn't work now. And I have three plasma TVs now. Well, soon I'm gonna have two because this one's gonna go. Instead of two broken plasma TVs, I now have a working one. And this thing is really rare, so you, you gotta take care of this thing. It's pretty thick, it's five inches thick right here. How much does it weigh? This thing weighs 82 pounds. I have it on this plastic box. I think this stuff is for like milk or something, I don't know. I just have it holding up because this plastic is really strong. And then I need this thing off the floor. Originally, it was on, on this. And then I have some DVI wires. They're not compatible with, or I mean they are, but they don't work with my, um, DVI device that, that that I'm gonna show you at 500 subscribers as a special and then here in the back we have a big Sony logo that's right underneath a fan this fan was so dusty I cleaned it out a bit you can see there's a fan down there and some more air vents right here it has a headphone jack 
um, my Samsung Plasma TV and the Panasonic. I think the Samsung doesn't have it, but the Panasonic, I think, does. I'm not sure. I think there was, like, something in the back or on the side of it where the buttons are. As you can see, the plastic shield for the Plasma display is peeling off, which is okay. I mean, it's just the plastic shield. And that's not good. It, it it makes the TV screen look ugly. I already tried cleaning it up with some vinegar. That helped quite a bit. And there's also True Surround by SRS. Speaker. And Energy Star right here. And then the Sony logo here in the center. The remote for it. It didn't come with a remote. Um, it did come with its original power cable. Here it is. This is the original one. And then its remote is this. This is this is the remote. It's a Samsung Galaxy S6 Edge with an IR sensor right here. And that's what I have to control the TV. We can turn on the TV. And you can just hear the relay just clicked. And there it is. Now we have to wake up the Roku too. If you look from the side, you can kind of see the image twice. That's like Plasma TV stuff. Like you can see there's home right here and then there's another home behind it. You can hear how loud the fan is. It's really, really strong. that's the fan it's pretty loud and we're gonna go ahead and launch youtube and watch a eureka video so while that's loading we can take a look at the speakers there they are there's one right here and then the on the opposite side it's the exact same right here and then in the center there's nothing there and then also the red light is gone and the power light is now on there's a green little light there. Also, there is screen burning on it. You can kind of see there's some lines right here. That's from screen burning. It doesn't... And there's my channel, which we can go ahead and go on. Loading up, you can definitely see the screen burning stuff right here. As you could see. I mean, now you can't really tell. But you can see there's like a line right here. And then also you can see there's some pixels refreshing a whole bunch of times per second. And as you can see, these bottom ones, they're not being used, so they're turned off. And then the ones that are being used are turned on, as you can see right here. And if we go on here, as you can see, um, in, in human vision, the screen kind of flickers a bit. You can kind of see in the camera, there's these lines right here. That's from the TV refreshing a whole bunch of times per second. From far away, you can't really tell. I mean, it's not like somebody's gonna put down a chair here and look directly in the screen. And this is a plasma TV, which means it does not have any LCD backlights in the back. There's no fluorescent LED lights and stuff like that. It's all powered with plasma. And this thing is pretty power hungry, but I mean, it is what it is. I mean, basically this entire plasma TV takes up like two of those TVs or some something like that. And I can demonstrate the speaker for you with the CRT TV slash monitor collection. Because that's kind of like the theme of this video. Not really. Plasma TVs are kind of like CRTs. They're just like thinner, I guess. They're mostly called like flat panel. Here is the screen. Sometimes it goes into like a square. Yeah, like right here. Not sure why it does that. It, it gets rid of the borders a little bit and then it just zooms out. I think that's either a problem with the Roku too. 
don't think it's a problem with the TV because I changed different kinds of settings and it still wouldn't change. You can still see screen burning down the sides here. And it's lagging. On a 5G network, that box still lags really hard. Oh yeah, I forgot to turn up the sound. Here's the volume button. These are all the working ones right here. This one I picked up a few days ago. Not sure when I got this. I think it was on the, um, like, March 2nd, I think I got and this. And can go behind it. It's March 8th right now. Uh, last week I got this thing. Then I got this hair. Don't remember when I got it. Where this Dell monitor has been with me for a long time. Also don't know when I got it. Subsonic TV. And we'll put that down so that way you can hear me a bit better. So there's the speaker. When you sit in front of the speaker, you can kind of hear like there's sound going here straight into your ear. And then from here straight into there. Kind of creates like surround sound. And that's because this is true surround. So that's why. They're not regular cheap TV speakers like most cheap TVs have. This thing is really expensive. This isn't Chinese garbage or something like that. Like some Memorex or some kind of Panasonic is. Like that type of garbage. It just died. For some reason it shut off. Not sure why it shut off. Even though there's like more 9% more battery left on it. So while we wait, we can sit next to the cat for a bit. Which likes the sun. It still froze. So let's play a different video, I guess. Uh, I guess we can watch the Tennessee stuff. It's right here. It's right here. As you can see, it's about to zoom out. Give it some time. Yep, there it goes again. Not sure why it does that. I don't know. All right, so I'm about to go on the menu. Here's the menu. A whole bunch of different features, as you can see. Sorry, the video's playing. I'm gonna shut it off in a second. And then in here, there's a unit status button. You can see there's the model. And then right underneath that is a fan, is um temperature and fan right there. And it both says, okay. The phone turned off again. The phone shut off again. I think it's, I think it ran out of battery. Here's the different inputs, video two, video three, video four, and then we have the channel right now. Different kinds of channels that you can scroll through. There's obviously not going to be any signal due to the antenna be being disconnected. There's nothing plugged in there. And then we're back to video one which is still playing the video. So there's the bottom, well, like towards the stand area. And then I'm using two audio wires because I don't have a single um, video wire. And yeah, so that's basically everything. It's really not more much of this TV. It's not a smart TV. I just have the Roku 2 plugged into it which makes it a smart TV. So yeah, thanks for watching. And I'll see you guys later. Here's the power down. You have to do it using the power button. And then you hear the fan slow down and turn off. Then you, then you hear a relay click in the back and now it's turned off. Thanks for watching, bye.